What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 72. It's your people, Cypher and Chronicles. If you're on YouTube, make sure you press that like button right now and uh, subscribe, you know, because we got that, that, those fire, fire topics. How you doing today, Stella? I am the race. I am on the ass end of a five day weekend. Memorial and, weekend, huh? Yeah. You know? A lot of a lot of stuff going on. Uh, you know, Vegas was super packed. I assume it was. Like I thought about it too, and I was like, oh, that's gonna be too people y for me. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody wearing masks no more. It's no, it's COVID over. COVID is officially over. <laughs> well, it's June. What did I do? No, I said it's June, and they were oh, yeah. saying shit's going to be done in June, basically, because I don't know how all of a sudden June makes COVID go away. But well, it was just like it a, does. it's a magical date, you know, it just disappears. Yep. Yeah, everything is back to normal. Poof, you know? it's gone. Mask off, poof, it's gone. Mask off, everyone's going to start playing that future song. Mask off, mask yeah. off. Right. What did you do? There. What did I do? Yeah. I uh, I went and indulged in the mask off activities. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I was out there with the mask off too. You know, no, I was doing some real legendary stuff. I was walking like? around, mask off, shirt off, dad bod oh, out. You know, shit. just living my best life. Why not? Oh shit! Yeah, you know what I'm saying. No, I went to the Devin Haney versus Jorge Linares fight. At the Mandalay Bay. Oh and, yeah, uh, how was that? Yeah, it was a good event. It was a real good event. Seemed to have been a sold out event for the amount of tickets they were selling, and I think it was a you know a real real success. And um, fight wise, pre fights, not all that you know, but uh, you know respect to those fighters out there. But the main fight was pretty good. Devin Haney did a did a good job. Jorge Linares did a good job. They both put on a show. They were both going at it. It wasn't one of those boring fights where they didn't want to throw punches. You know, they were just, you know, let it, letting it all, letting it all out, you know, just going for the knockout, both of them. So both of them got hit with a few good shots. And yeah, no, it was a good time. Um, I'll tell you a little story that happened while I was there at the fight. So me and Erica, we went to the bar immediately when we got to the fight. Well, we went to the bar before the fight. Too. I we saw you there. guys were pre-gaming a little bit. We were pre- pre-gaming. We went to a yeah. speakeasy. I love speakeasies because you can speak hey. easy. <laughs> but um, <laughs> they had some fire cocktails in there, man. And uh, they had uh, a list of old fashions. And I'm a huge old fashioned fan. And they had like five specialty old fashions. And they had one that was a PB&J old fashioned. I was like, well, that's the interesting. Hell? That sounds they interesting. Used, they used the peanut butter whiskey for the, the screwball. Yep, they used the screwball, and they got graham cracker around the top, and um, they mix it with some with some jam, and they and they give you a like a big spear. Uh, what do they call it? A spherical ice, you know, like one of those. Yeah, like the ball. Yeah, it's a ball, so it looks yeah. really cool, right? And um, that was our first drink, and it was it was dangerous because that'll creep up on you. Those ones, because it doesn't even seem like you're drinking alcohol. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You drink it fast because it tastes good. And yep. Yep. yep super good. And you know, so we started off the night with that right there. And then I had something called a model T. And by What's the way, that? I'm talking about the 1942 prohibition speak easy at the Mandalay Bay in case any of you are, are wondering what I'm talking about. And it's super, super cool spot. Makes you feel like you're in, you know, back in the day, you know, they got the, the candles lit in there. They got some some cool music going, you know, nothing crazy. And you can speak easy. Now I get <laughs> why they call it speak easies. Anyways, the Model T has some Hennessy in it. And I'm I'm not typically a Hennessy uh, drinker. But I haven't had Hennessy since I was like 16. Anytime I ever drink Hennessy, I just straight up black out. And, you know, that Uh-oh. was not the case this time. So, Good. you know, just enjoy the cocktail. And, uh, yeah, so we make our way to the fight. And get inside the building. By the way, they make you answer like a uh, uh, all right. So they make you download an app called uh-huh. Clear. Uh-huh. And so you're supposed to upload your picture, they scan your face, do all that, and then they make you answer a questionnaire. And then you gotta show like proof that you did this questionnaire. And basically yeah. it's showing that it. it's showing that you're good to go in. And you know, I'm sure not everybody's gonna tell the truth on you know this text. <laughs> I'm running out of breath, I'm talking so fast, but um Basically, like you got to say, like you haven't had COVID symptoms or whatever, right? Uh huh. Um, 
<sighs> Gotta catch my breath. <clears throat> so we get inside the fight. First thing first, go to the bar. And once we get in the bar, we both order some uh, fireball on the rocks. Come to find out, they gave me the model bottle liquid. All right. So what that is, they basically fill up a bottle, uh, whatever they have available, with water, vinegar, and food coloring. <gasps> yeah. And they gave that to us. And we didn't smell it, do the smell test, or nothing like that before we took a sip. We both oh, nearly threw up, dude. Hell no. I was mad, too. Bro, I was pissed. I'd be I go back, and I'm like, livid. what did you just give me? So we ordered double shots. I said, make this a quadruple shot right now. Right. That's some bullshit. What did I just drink? Right. You know, like, and I'm telling them that, and, you know, they're all, you know, they're apologetic. And I get it. Mistakes happen. But I'm like, what did I just put in my body? Yeah. And the lady's like, oh, it's just water. I'm like, that's not just water. She was yeah. like, oh, it's got some vinegar in it. I'm like, am I going to be cool? You know? Well, yeah. see, I know vinegar kills bacteria. So, yeah. you know, if there's vinegar in it, I'm sure I'm good. Right. But I was still pissed. You know what I'm saying? Uh, fucking, that's disgusting. I would have thrown up. Like, vinegar is foul as shit. Yep. Yep. Oh, my yep. God. I mean, I do, I do once in a while drink apple cider vinegar, you know? <laughs> oh, not me. That shit gives me heartburn. I don't know how people can do that. They're like, oh, you do this. It's going to, like, you know... You're going to lose weight and you're going to be super healthy. It's like, bro, that does not feel healthy when I've taken a shot of that shit. Like, shit gives me gnarly heartburn. Yep, yep. I like kombucha, too. So, you know, kombucha, I believe, sometimes. Yeah, it's vinegary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's refreshing. I like it. But, yeah. I only like one flavor of kombucha, and that's the Hum brand coconut Mm -hmm. lime. That's the only kombucha that I like. GT is fire, by the way. I've never tried it. Yeah, they got the trilogy. It's called trilogy, and it's oh really yeah, yeah, that like um, yeah. bright colored bottle. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's like a rainbow. I haven't tried that flavor. I have tried their lavender one, mm-hmm. and that one's not good. That one's not bad. But I, I think the only one that actually tastes good to me is the coconut lime from Hum. Right. All the other ones taste very kombucha y, but that brand specifically doesn't tastes super kombucha e, and i like that i i love just feeling the zen feel after i drink kombucha because i felt like i did something great as a matter of fact next uh-huh. time i drink kombucha i might even do yoga and while i do that yoga oh, shit. I, might, I might even oh, shit. pour some of that yoga bling boutique hey if you're looking for unique and eye-catching foot jewelry you'll fall in love with yoga bling boutique Our unique line of toe rings and anklets are gorgeous conversation pieces that make heads turn. Visit yogablingboutique.com for exotic toe rings, anklets, and socks that caress your lovely feet like a glove. We are on Facebook as Yoga Bling Boutique FB. Also look for us on Instagram as Yoga Bling Boutique. Your feet deserve jewelry from Yoga Bling Boutique. For more information, go to yogablingboutique.com. Hey. I don't know why. Like, er, shout, out, shout out to you, Yoga, Yoga Bling Boutique. Yoga right Bling, here. get your girls I don't know why, up. but every time I hear that ad and she says caress, it gets me every time. She says, make sure that jewelry caresses your foot. I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, I You're want like, girls, you better now. stop. <laughs> <laughs> you better stop. <laughs> you better quit playing talk. with me. <laughs> Come and caress something over here, right quick, Sexy girl. Sexy ass Siri. Shit. I got to figure out who did that ad. I'm going to holler at uh, our Holler at Yoga Bling. Yeah. But, anyways, uh, it's summer, work. though, guys. You guys yeah, better get your summertime. Yoga Bling. Yay. Get your get your anklets, get your toe rings, have your feet and ankles looking fly as hell while you're out at the beach in the pool, pool parties, whatever. Get yourself hooked all the way up. Holler at Yoga Bling. I'm actually really excited for summer, man. Like it, it's starting to feel like summer too. And especially because you can go outside and everything like that now. You know, I, I love it. And I'm looking forward to summertime activities, even though I still got the dad bod. Whatever, man. I'm just ready I'm- to get out there, you know. I had mom bod in full swing this weekend because. Uh oh. Yeah, I uh, I went to a. Wait, what did I do Saturday? Oh, Saturday I. 
Well, I was off half the day Friday. Like I was supposed to be off all day Friday and I ended up working till like 1230. And then I um, started tie-dyeing some shirts for the podcast, oh, guys. So yeah. Let's, Love it. Let me tell you that color options and tie-dye is all the craze right now. And it's you're going to be able to rock your very own tie-dye with you know, Cypher and Chronicles logo and be styling and profiling and repping the pod in Love style. It. So um, just keep a lookout for those. Those will be ready soon. Stella coming um, with the heat on the tie dye, man. Yeah, she's, the yeah, designer. Yeah. she's the merch designer over there. You know. <laughs> um, and if you want the, if you like the black shirt and you want that like bleached, you know, with that opposite tie dye, we, we can hook you up with that. Um, just let me know. Um, and it's still 25 bucks a pop for the black shirts and you can cash app or Venmo or PayPal $25 Stella the Bella make them holla. Yep. All the info is in the description. So, um, if you're curious, holler. Um, so I did that. I did some of that and I kind of let that simmer all weekend long. I got that, got the jump on that. And then Saturday I went and visited my grandma who I haven't seen in over a year because of the pandemic. Um, and she's, she's lonely. She's been wanting me to come over and I finally was like, okay, so just, you know, an FYI, I'm, it's like I should I could wear a mask. I don't have to be around you without one. And she's like, no, it's OK. I'm like, OK, mm -hmm. you get COVID, though. Don't I don't want people blaming me for <laughs> the shit happening to you, you know? Yeah, you definitely. But her husband, more. her husband got the Johnson and Johnson vaccine uh -huh. Um, when that was available before they pulled it. Um. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I'd, she's not super worried about it. I mean, she's almost 80 year old Mexican lady from fucking, you know, grew up in Mexico City and Tijuana. So like really nothing's going to take this woman down, you know, I, right. you I know, so I, she, you know, she just she's fucking built different. Mexico, if, if Mexico <laughs> City didn't take her down. Mexico yeah, City sure or TJ. She also <laughs> grew up TJ. in TJ. So yeah, the Rona ain't got nothing. The, on those it's cities. got nothing on those places. <laughs> uh, and the way that she cooks and all that, like nothing's taking her down, honestly. Mm. Um so yeah, yeah and she fucking there. hooks up food every time I go. It's great. She usually makes me chilarianos because she knows that's my favorite. But um this that's time she did this whole lot. Yeah, I love them. I love chilarianos. Mm. Um I like them too, though. Yeah, they're really good. They're just a process. Like, I hate making them, but I love eating them. It seems like a process. Like, you got to put, like, egg around it or something like that. Egg, right? and you got to fry it. You got to make, like, the sauce. It's like... It's an art. And, but you got to, like, like burn the chilies, basically, to peel them, to mm -hmm. de-seed them, to stuff them with cheese that you have to, like, chop up. Like, because I use uh, Monterey Jack. I'm officially hungry. It's F so bomb. Mm -hmm. um, really good. <laughs> But a process. And right. this is the first time she didn't make them. And I'm not mad at it because it's a process. But um wish I knew she, how to cook. I wish you knew how to cook, too. Oh, Your yeah. wife cooks well, though. She does. She so, I mean, you kind of technically don't really have to. Because Erica have to, hooks no. it up. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so she hooked up some food. My cousin went up there, too. He was, his mom lives there. So, we did a little birthday thing for my aunt. And then um, I came home. I went to bed early. I got up Sunday morning. I went on a hike, Word. got sunburned around my neckline, which is like the most random place. I've never been sunburned around my neckline before. So that was interesting. Oh, wow. Um, and then I went to a pool party slash barbecue. Um, shout out to Anthony and Jessica. Yeah, um, he was he was the hostess with the mostest, dude. Like this guy, I love the um, hostess with the mostest. Those are yeah. The best so me and my friend get there, and there's two other chicks there, and it's me and Jessica, and then Anthony, and he's barbecuing, he's deep frying some like he's making French fries. Oh, what? He's got this whole like cocktail menu, like different margaritas, different meals, Dang. different old fashions. He's he knows like, how to throw a party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's got a nice little pool and, and spa what? in the backyard. Um, and 
we show up with a big floaty because we want to like blow it up and like lay on yeah. it in the pool. Yeah. So we're like, he's like trying to like barbecue and like blow up the floaty and like make us drinks and like, you know what I mean? And serve us our food. He's like doing all the things and um, shout out to him, dude. That's fucking crazy. He's, you know, he, he hooked us up. He treated us like princesses. It, and then it, afterwards, it, huh? I was going to say, is he in the hospitality business? No. It's usually people in the hospitality business that throw the best parties. Yeah, no, he's not. Um, but he's just a he's just a good guy. So like Word. then um after lunch and we're chilling for a little bit and we have some cocktails, he like makes Sundays for everybody. What? Yeah, he made like ice cream with a cookie and like yeah, he like My he goodness. baked he baked cookies to put in the ice cream. Did like azukis? Yeah, kind oh of. Oh my goodness, <laughs> yep. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out to I him. didn't get a Sunday though. I only was, I only got a cookie because, um, he, he, uh, <laughs> I think I've told this. I don't know if I've told this on the podcast before. Um, he was my first boyfriend my, okay. ever when I was like in fifth and sixth grade, right? <laughs> And That's I don't know precious, if he's, he, I think he precious. listens to the podcast, so he's going to hear this. And he's oh, like, what right? the fuck? <laughs> 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 because, um, you gotta make him blush, man. Why no. listen to the pod? <laughs> because when we were in like fifth and sixth grade, you know, you like, you know, you're a fucking child. You're like breaking up, getting back together, you know, suppose like what that, whatever that looks like as 10 and 11 year olds. Right. Right. Um, and I remember we were broken up and our our game, like for that age, like everybody, we always played dodgeball. I thought like, you were going to say spin the bottle for some reason. No, it's like the big cherry ball fucking dodgeball, right? Dang. And I remember one day he was mad and he, he literally hit me in the face oh. during a game. Yeah. And he thought you're never going to let that go. That was in 1996. <laughs> like fucking not. get over it. You know? Yeah. Um, I, it's, it's still funny to me. It's just a funny story to me. because. Right. But that's why I didn't get ice cream. He said I can barely have a cookie. So because mm. he was mad that I told him. <laughs> um i forgive you by the way anthony if you're listening to this just she forgives you an fyi um but yeah and then we ended up chilling in the the spa all evening and more chicks showed up and i think he did that on purpose where mm -hmm. he just had a bunch of women come over and mm -hmm. he was like the only guy and Smart then guy. like yeah guy. <laughs> Salute and, to yeah and then he uh I think he sent a picture of him with us all to one of his homies and his homies like, all right, I'm on my way. <laughs> kind of <thing. laughs> um, yeah, no, it was a good night. It was a good night. It, it ended with some pull-ups in his garage. Mm -hmm. Just everybody seeing how many they couldn't do basically. Who hit the most? Wasn't me. Probably, no. <laughs> Anthony. Probably Anthony. He's pretty jacked. Um, pull-up bar. Yeah, he's got the whole like guy. Spa Invite rack. all the ladies to the yeah. crib. Show everybody a great time, swimming pool, spa, My ice thing? cream Sundays, and then shows Move. off at the end of the night by doing some jack Move. pull ups. <laughs> and he was making the old fashions with the sphere ice oh, cube. Are you kidding me? And like margaritas and mules. Like he had the whole menu. It was, he had it was an Anthony showcase. In. It was he invited everybody to the Anthony showcase. Yeah, y'all want to go to Anthony's parties if he's throwing it. You Man, definitely want to go. I'm gonna have to go to Anthony's party too. But yeah, uh, you're gonna have to holler. You're gonna have to drive yeah. to come to San Diego. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm definitely gonna have to make my way. And, and I'm coming. I'll bring the cervezas and I'll bring some carne asada, and um, we can have like a collab, a collab cookout. Right. right. Yeah, I'll I bring think the you'd jalapenos be down. too, and For we're gonna sure. make. He made spicy these. margaritas too. Uh, with I, the see, I see. I see. Oh, he put shit. a little bit of fire in that ass yeah. too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All you know right. He had all of you bitches farting too. He, <laughs> no, we weren't actually. He uh. Oh, flames out that butt. Not yet. Not a, not during the night. Maybe the next day. All right. Um, all right. but, and then yesterday, 
Uh, we, me and Jessica went to the Carlsbad outlets. Have you ever been there when you lived I've here? I've never been there. I've never okay. been there. Well, I remember when I was like a younger person, like the Carlsbad outlets were like nice, right? Okay. Like that's where you went to go shopping in the nice stores. It was nice. Not we nice went more. yesterday. That shit is ghetto as hell. Oh, and no. I told her, I was like, that's what happens when you give the hood stimulus checks, dude. Oh, snap. So they show up and they like ghetto fi the whole outlets. Man, I'm not mad at it. It's you. just not my scene. I don't know, man. I think the stimmies are, are done for now. I mean, that was a while ago. I mean, people already blew the stimmies. stimmies yeah. Out but the window. But the habits are dying hard. Like they like they're just out here shopping and spending. It's like that retail therapy, you know. Retail therapy is a real thing, though. It is a real thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've done it. I used to do it all the time. And, and sometimes you just got to get something that you want, you know. You know. Um, yeah. But I also just I'm not a female who is like I'm not a shopper. I only go to the store when I need something to get specifically what I need. And that's it. I'm not really a shopper, mm -hmm. but I did need shorts because I don't have denim shorts that fit me because your girl got a little thick during COVID. Mm -hmm. And that was depressing. Yesterday, I went to PacSun and I couldn't get the shorts or the denim skirts over my hips. Uh -oh. And then when I did get them over my hips... It's like they smashed my ass like down and I didn't like that. And I'm like, what the fuck is yeah, this? Yeah, that Hank Hill butt. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> pushed, it was like pushing them in because I have big hips just in general. I have big hips in general. But it was like, it's, it's like it'll be tight on my hips and my ass and like not tight on my waist and not tight on my leg. You know what I mean? Like it's just a yeah. really... It's a weird body shape. I'm probably going to have to holler at Fashion Nova because I think that's made for chicks with curves. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, that was not a fun experience yesterday. You want to know what else is made for chicks with curves? What? Car sex. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> Car I sex don't... is made for chicks with curves. I disagree. I don't think car sex is made for anybody. What? I don't like I can't say car sex is worth it. I really want to know. Had good car sex? I've had okay, I've had good car sex like I get there, you know like you know what I mean, but mm -hmm. it's always got to be like like I have like a gash in my knee or something. Like there's definitely like collateral the damage. Well, I think the the one of the worst parts is for the chicks is probably the seatbelt. Like when a it's chick the tries the seatbelt. The <laughs> That's exactly what cut my leg <laughs> the last time I did it. And then and and it's like you got to be in like weird positions like I was I had, you know, car sex with some guy in my mom's driveway like <laughs> when I lived in Oregon, honestly. And then uh and what it was is he sat in the passenger seat, front passenger seat, and I sat in the front passenger seat, but I was facing him. My back was on like the airbag. My mm -hmm. legs were over his shoulders, you know, and I was kind of like getting at it like that. And it's just like a very like awkward. That sounds like a weird position. <laughs> it's a weird position, but like. Maybe that's why you've never had a good experience. You're doing like impossible positions but it's <laughs> you said like, your legs were over his shoulders yeah like i was Ow, facing sway. him and like this you know and he um but that's the thing like when you're in a car trying to do that it's like not all cars have the same kind of interior space so you kind of gotta like fucking figure it out to where it's like the least awkward for both of you. And I think that the guys always get to be the least awkward in, in car sex. I think it's the chicks who always have to fucking like move weird or have their knees digging into the seatbelt whole thing, the clicker, or you know what I mean? Just so that it can make it work. And it's, I don't think it's as fun for us as it is for you guys. So is there like a, a, a vehicle type that is like the cutoff, like for car sex? Like should guys just always have SUVs? Because I think I have that, done it in an SUV and that was the most comfortable and it was yeah, in the, like the middle row seat. of the SUV. Yeah. yeah. 
like you could get down on your knees and go at it. Oh, and oh like, my could, goodness. Like, She's getting graphic, could, y'all. <laughs> yeah. And you could just, you know, there's space. So you could like, you know what I mean? That is the most ideal for car sex, but mm-hmm. cars or anything where you can only be up in the front seat is like, it's rough. I think car sex is only for single people and fresh, freshly talking people. Yeah. Married yeah, people don't sure. do car sex. Cause well, I don't, why would you, you have a bed, like you can be comfortable. But like a lot of times when I did have car sex, it was one of those spur of the moment. We're both feeling horny and we pull over and just make it happen type of thing. You know what I'm saying? But now I wasn't well married. That was single shit. Right. And like we were definitely, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And when even when we're on the way, knowingly to the house or something where we could do it there, we still pull over and do it. You know, I mean, as a married person, I just it just doesn't happen. But I sense. just, I think too, like if you're doing that, if you're on your way home, but you can't wait to get home to have sex, that's. Ugh. I think that it, it's more of a trying to like getting that adrenaline rush that excitement kind of a thing you know what it i mean is. like women do more car head because guys love car head I'm did you see army of the dead we're not trying to die no man <laughs> just pay attention to the road bro who yeah but the that not every guy is the same way some guys when they fucking nut like their knees go out like they just completely legs fucking go to jelly like Right. Those guys should not be asking for roadhead. If you're a kind of guy who can't, you know, focus on driving, you should never ask for roadhead. I don't or think accept it. Roadhead is ever asked of. Asked of from oh, the it's, chick. Asked. it's always the chick wanting to do it. No, like, it is not. I don't know one chick who's you're, like, you're tripping, yeah, no. your dick while you're driving. No way. Yeah. I'm gonna do Just a do pull. that because they want to turn the guy on. I'm going to do a poll. I'm going to ask. Do guys ask for roadhead or do girls? Um, or do girls initiate it? Roadhead? That's not a thing. Oh, wait. I don't think I've ever received roadhead that I asked for. Like, hey, why don't you come I've in? I've never world? just been it's- like, hey, let me suck your dick while you're driving. That's because you're no fun. <laughs> That's because I'm safe. And I'm ladies and gentlemen, that is why she is still single. <laughs> maybe. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why. She Honestly, or maybe it's because I know my head game is strong and oh I'm God. trying to like keep us alive. <laughs> what was what was the the meme that you just read? Oh, the sometimes you got to I've never nut from head your way into head or something like that like Yeah. To get the girl to do it, you got to tell her you've never had So true though nutted and then she's gonna be like challenge accepted yeah fucking yeah. go to town is that you is that you if a that's guy so that's manipulated you? yeah no i'm like oh I'm that's never, unfortunate I'm never <laughs> nutted from head it's crazy and the chick's like you know what sit your ass down I'm like oh oh she's oh. a hold my beer <laughs> <laughs> she's like i got this and then she uh, just i mean i think i <laughs> maybe that would have worked on me when I was younger for sure. But at this age, I'm like, Oh, that's too bad, bro. That's too bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's unfortunate. You know, yeah. like it is. Yeah. I Like me, like, I mean, it's relatable that, you know, you to say something like that, to get yourself into getting some head. But, um, I mean, like in reality, <laughs> nah, like if she's like doing good and going, going to town, then it ain't going to take too long. <laughs> it's going to be like one minute. <laughs> right. I think for most guys, they could probably go like at a soon time. But I think a lot of the times too, they really enjoy it and try to hold off as long as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I don't know. That's I'm not a man. So I, I'm only, you know, speculating yeah. here. But mm-hmm. I just think I feel like that's the case because unless it's very teethy, maybe not. All right. So I do got something to say about about Roadhead, though, that is actually very relevant to what we're talking about. There's like a certain angle for a chick to give a guy head that, um, you know, obviously that I I speak from experience. Mm -hmm. Like if like Roadhead is coming from the side, right? It's not exactly like on the shaft. Like what makes the guy go is when like her 
tongue like the reason why like you want a chick in front of you when you're getting head or yeah or what have you it's because like her tongue is like underneath the shaft underneath the shaft yeah underneath it but like when you're on when she's on the side you know she's not if she's like not using her hands at the same time and her tongue is like on the side of your stuff yeah it's gonna feel good it's gonna feel nice but you're not gonna go as quick so like chicks like if you're listening to this and i'm sure guys listening to this right now could relate when you give a guy head you gotta you know what i'm saying she's got to you know, she's got to be on the shaft. She's going to at least be using the hands on the shaft if she's from the side. So take notes, ladies. That's, that's what us guys like. That's my issue with the the 69 position. Right. Because I don't like, I don't think it feels like, I don't think I'm giving you my best when I'm coming from above you like that because the tongue is not on the right side, I feel like. You know? Right. And but I she feel does like... Have I was going to say she does have some some leverage on uh, the shaft with her hands, though, because it's right. coming from the other side. Well, you have to. You le- like you have to. I think to give a successful blowjob, you have to be hand and mouth teamwork. You know, maybe more mouth than hand. I think some people try to use more hand than mouth, mm-hmm. you know, and it all depends on what he's working with, too. Sometimes you just can't. You know, um, see the hand feels good if there's a lot of a lot of spit moisture. On. Yes, a lot of moisture. Yes, I agree. I think that that's the case, but it's hard to really. I feel like the best one comes from below, like you said. Like that's when yeah. you're really getting in there. And I think I, I it's my issue with when they ask for it from a side position. I'm like, this isn't gonna feel good for you. Like, like let me you know move if if i can't do it right here then i can't do it right here like is there ever a right time for a guy to ask for head or should it always be the woman's uh initiation you have to make it feel like it's her idea if you're gonna do that yeah because i well i'm just like the kind of bitch where if you ask me to do something like that like i'm gonna be like fuck you like have you ever asked for head? do what i want Have Have I asked asked for it? You ever been asked to uh, be eaten out? Really? Yes. Okay. I hate that I have to ask, though. Like, I feel like the majority of the men I've been with, like, actually, almost every single one of them, I haven't ever had to ask them. It was just like, they were, like, begging me to let them. Mm -hmm. And that's get your fucking rocks off, bro. Like go for it. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. but, um, there has been, you know, the instance where I've had to literally ask for it. And I was just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, why don't you just want to do this? Because I've never, like when I'm engaging in, in that, you don't have to ask me for that. Like that's automatic for me. Like I'm gonna do that. Like, I'm an adult. I'm a grown ass woman. Like I want to, you know, make you feel fantastic. And I think that that's part of it. And, and you don't have to ask me, I'm just going to fucking do it. You know, like Mm -hmm. I'm initiating that shit. Um, and so it bothered me when I had to like ask for it. I was like, what the fuck is this? So fellas, just, just do it. Just go down on your chick, go down lick the clit, make her feel great, give her that passionate loving, that foreplay, because she's going to do everything that you ask her afterwards. Mm-hmm. I, you know what? I've never had an experience with um, my wife or any of my you know, experiences in the past where I did go down and she didn't want to suck me right afterwards. Right? It yeah. like makes you want to do all kinds of shit to him. You're like, what do you want? Like, fuck it. I don't even know if you want this, but I'm going to try it. Like, let's see. Like, Mm-hmm. It, it really does put you on a whole other level and like nothing keeps, you know, the poon wet, like, mm-hmm. you know, just being turned on and aroused and feeling desired and all those things. So as long as you're doing the shit, like she's going to stay mm-hmm. good as long as the experience needs. It's nice to get like for like both of the people involved, you and the person that you're with to like both be like very into it because when mm-hmm. you're very into it like there's there's a huge difference from like just wanting to get your rocks off right quick mm-hmm. or actually like having that 
passionate sex where you're like both like really into it like that's a really really great feeling it when is both, when you're both like really just like on the verge of climaxing and you're just both like moaning and just both clearly into it i mean that's the best kind of sex right there it opinion. is it is it is yeah. we're here for that we want everybody to have that kind of sex Absolutely. So everybody go to Take your notes. sex store and get some toys <laughs> for each other. <laughs> Take oh, by the, I just saw I just saw this toy. Um, I don't know why it was advertised to me. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> but um, it's like a blow. Fucking... It's like a blowjob simulator or whatever. Oh shit! It's because yeah. of your little instance leaving that shit on your bathroom counter. That's why. <laughs> Siri Maybe. took notes. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, I guess you put lube in it and it's supposed to simulate a blowjob or whatever. And it and it warms up the lube and it what? has some kind of like tongue type of action in there. What? And I'm like, I'm like <laughs> tapping my card, like, I want it. Send it to yep. me now. <laughs> yeah. I want to check it out. I want to buy one. I, I'll send it to I'll send it to you so you can see what I'm talking yeah. about. Like, yeah, that's just yeah, that's I want to see that. Because I feel like there's a lot more shit out there for for women than there is for men. So like I always like to see and hear when there's like cool sex toys for men. As a married guy, I like having um sex toys because, you know, like when you're thinking with your lizard brain, that's when guys go and mess up and do things they're not supposed to, but when you like get your rocks off and you do it in a way that's pleasurable. You know, helps keep your mind right, you know. And it, I mean, that's how I feel when it comes to like sex toys and whatnot. And, you know, like finding ways to, you know, keep yourself tamed because I think a lot of being a, a married man is keeping yourself tame because I mean, we're all, you know, men and we all have like natural instincts or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's good to, you know, experience, you know, sexual pleasure in, in different kind of ways. And toys is one of them. And I think that it's almost kind of frowned upon with most men. They're like, you got a pocket pussy? Like, that's weird. You know, like, what's weird about it? You know, women have dildos and have vibrators yeah. and, you know, right. um, you know, and everybody, you know, to each their own when it comes to what you enjoy or what have you. So, I, you know, I don't judge any guy that likes to, you know, put the beads up there or whatever. I mean, I don't personally, you know, like that kind of stuff. But hey, you know, to, like I said, to each their own, you know, even right. some guys like gerbils up there. I don't know about that. Speaking of, didn't you see something about the I ER? I did. What, so what was that all about? The ER finding like crazy things up people's... uh. Anal yeah, let me see if I have that article right here. My goodness. Um, and and it all came about because we, you and I, had a uh a podcast where we talked about butt stuff. Right. And that's literally like what we called it was butt stuff that that clip. Mm -hmm. And we had somebody comment on it talking about how, like, have you guys ever, like, looked into what doctors have found up people's asses? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I was like, I haven't actually, like, surprisingly, you know, like, what the fuck? And, like, I was looking it up and I came to this article on HuffPost um, UK talking about 11 weird things that doctors have found stuck in people's butts. Um, so oh, if you guys are ready, I will list these things. I think everybody's ready. Lay it on us. So the first one says the leg of a bed. Oh my goodness. And it says the story he gave me was that he and his partner were in the process of moving home and he decided to take a rest by sitting on the Divian, which was upside down. He told me that as he did, I got quite a surprise as I sat down on the leg of a bed. Oh, shit. Oh, no. That sounds like a nightmare. I actually knew somebody, um, one of my boys, I ain't going to say his name right now, but he had a, a, a woman in his life that was into that kind of stuff, like putting bedposts up her, um, I don't know about up her, up her booty, but um, in her, yeah. In her hoo Yep. I knew like a chick who would put like wine bottles up her hoo ha, and oh, like goodness. she the like made money off it. Like she would send the pictures narrow like end that. Or the big end. The narrow end. Okay, all right. I think that's I don't know. Dangerous, man. What if it? That's fucking oh. wild. That's too much for me. Right. Oh. Um. Oh. Next, are you ready for this one? Yeah. 
cement mix. Oh, what? So it says, according to this medical report, the couple explained that the man with concrete in his anus had asked his partner to stir up a batch of concrete before asking him to pour it into his rectum via a funnel. The material then hardened and caused him enormous pain. No shit, bro. What the (laughs) fuck? Like, this is why... This is why companies have to put dumb warnings like that. Like, please don't put cement in your ass. Like, <laughs> because people put cement in their ass. Like, that's not what it's for. What the fuck are you thinking? Unreal, man. Oh my god. Okay. Next. That's ridiculous. I just that's don't understand what the goal might have been for that. I one. You don't know what I mean? get it. Like I the really bed don't. post. I'm like, all right. Like they're trying to, you know you know, get off in that kind of way. But like cement, like, dude, like you can like off yourself, like by putting that in yeah. your body. Yeah. You're cementing your asshole. Like what the fuck? Right, That's like, crazy. No sense. Okay. Next, a boiled egg, which seems normal-ish to me. Like more, out of all the things we've cement. listed, that's yeah. like way more acceptable. <laughs> it says a well-dressed older gentleman came in wearing this sort of raincoat one usually associates with flashers. He claimed he'd been standing at a bus stop when a group of youths accosted him and inserted a hard boiled egg up his arse. arse. It was the fact that the shell had been removed, which made the story so amusing to me and the likelihood so bizarre. So at least they took the shell out of the egg before they shoved it up his ass. That's terrible, though. Yeah. That's yeah, really at least sad. They took the, the egg out, but. At least, like, that's not going to, like, be permanently stuck. Right. You know? (laughs) Versus cement. Like, I don't think I'm going to get over the cement one. And, like, like, hard-boiled eggs are soft and, like, mushy. And, like, you could probably, like, you know, squeeze it out or something. I don't know. Right. Um, Okay, next. Are you ready for this one? (laughs) Sure. Uh, A rat. Oh, no. The doctors flipped him the patient over and saw a tail coming out of his butthole. After doing a CT scan, they found a rat inside his rectum. The rat bit off part of his colon and the man was suffering from internal bleeding, which is why his face turned blue. The man apparently had decided to place a condom over a live rat to suffocate it and then put it up his ass so that its breathing would hit his prostate and he would feel pleasure. Oh no. The man made a full recovery, but the rat died, obviously. That is what the fuck? Sorry, rat. Sorry, ratty boy. Oh my God. So what we gotta like sell rats or keep them off this not let people that tell it rat in its previous life probably did some fucked up shit to have to like suffer that in his next rat. It was life. a shitty person. It was like <laughs> a racist a shitty person, person who yeah. like their karmic coins could only per- be purchased like as a rat in their next life. And then they suffocated by were, way of yeah, asshole. by being put in a condom <laughs> in an ass. Unreal. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. That is a terrible and shitty situation. <laughs> Unintended. Um, next is a few small balls, which sounds normal. Uh, Says uh, I had to break pieces of one of the balls to make it smaller in order to get it out, and it took him two hours. He was thinking as he did it, I don't remember going to a lecture on how to get a fucking softball out of some chap's arse. Oh, it was a arse. Arse is so funny to me. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's a UK article. Right, right. So. UK people crack me up. I they love do. their lingo. I love the lingo the too. Time. The jargon is very, yeah. I need to go there. <clears throat> okay, the next is a screwdriver. Oh, no. Says this is one of the items listed in the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Database of Emergency Room Visits in 2017. It's Mm -hmm. not clear how the screwdriver got there and what its purpose was. What Mm -hmm. in the hell? That's. I mean, you know, like, I mean, it's kind of like a a dildo in a way, though. Like, if you do. Well, which end are they putting in there first? Which end? Yeah. yeah. That's the question. Which end? But, like, from hearing some of these, though, it's making me feel like people 
really enjoy some like weird Anal. kind of pain. Yeah. But like the kind of pain that's going to actually cause them some, some real damage and potentially have to go to the hospital for real. But some people really do like that kind of pain. They like to be punished in that kind they of do. way. They do. Yeah. That's the whole, that's the whole like domination world, you know? Yeah, people, it is. It is. People love to be done. And, and a lot of guys, they like to be dominated by the women and, you know, punished by them. And it's usually men who make a lot of money. Mm hmm. Yeah. They, um, they, they like to feel like they uh, like to be dominant. Control. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So the next one is a letter opener. Oh, like a razor. They're like sharp, you know, like that stick Stop. that's like sharp. Um, tripping up there, man. Come on, man. Keep your arses <laughs> safe. Goodness. According <laughs> to medical notes, they attempted to dislodge a dildo from his anus by using a letter opener. What? Both the letter opener and the dildo had to be removed. Holy shit. The letter was in there too? Well, the dildo was stuck in there. So he used a letter opener to try to get the dildo out and ended up oh. getting stuck with both of them. And so he had to go to the oh. ER to get Whoa. both removed. So he tried to like stick the sharp part into the dildo. Uh -huh. to, to pull to it out. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Imagine That's going to the hospital though. Like. And like who's like, taking how, how are you, you getting there? Are you laying in the back seat so you're not sitting <laughs> on this shit? Like right. and, and then you're like ass is like the, out. You know? Like what the fuck? <laughs> or that imagine like so going awkward. into the ER and they're like, sir, what's wrong? And you're just like, oh. and you gotta like say it like in a, a very like, painful whispering voice. They're like, we'll take you immediately. Oh, uh, or they make you sit and wait. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, like you, know, you don't understand. I can't sit and wait. Yeah. And they're like, uh, sir, we have There's five no people thing. ahead of you. Like, no, I don't think you understand. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, like, oh. I'd be man. like, well, they didn't choose to put shit in their ass that didn't belong there. So you have to wait. <laughs> um. Okay. Next is body spray. Huh. A lawyer admitted to having shoved the body spray up his rectum and removing it successfully in the past. He failed this time. The deodorant was impulse body spray, three centimeters in diameter, by, by, in diameter by 17 centimeters long, and emergency room doctors had to sedate the man with spinal anesthetic to remove the foreign body. Hmm. Oh, that's, oh, there's like a, yep, the bodies, there's an x-ray picture. I don't know if people can see it. A uh, little bit, a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So the next one, a knife. Oh, no. What end of the knife? Just... Just it says that how it did not cut the patient's butt insides is a wonder and a miracle. But it got stuck. Yeah, there's the here's the thing. Look. There's an X-ray of it. There's an X-ray of it. Do you see it? Oh no! It's like lodged sideways. It's how did like it in I there? Yeah, that's <sighs> fucking wild. Um, that's next nuts. is a key. How and why no one except the patient will ever really know. Here's the x-ray. Did he swallow it? Looks it looks like it was swallowed. Right. Yeah. Um, next one, a whole beer bottle. <laughs> a literally a whole beer bottle. Just shoved up there. Shoved up the ass. My Skinny God. end first. Oh, my God. There's some real kinks in the world, y'all. Some of y'all motherfuckers are freaky as hell. Y'all are some that freaks, is. man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was number Never 11. once have I ever been drinking a Heineken, and I thought to myself, uh, you know, it'd be nice to shove this up my butt. Right. That <laughs> might feel good if I shove this up my ass or I something. Mean, yeah, hey. I know. Hey, don't get no ideas. Shoving Heinekens up the Heine yeah. may not be uh, be good. Nah, not a good, not a good idea, not a good choice. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That well, was quite is, uh, the list. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, this is a very, very informative podcast today. Everybody, I hope you're enjoying this because, um, you know, Stella really went down the rabbit hole of things butt that go stuff. up butts. Yeah. 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 Just butt like, stuff uh, this, was a, a topic this, this weekend. 2.0. This is butt yeah. stuff 2.0. Right. Right. I'm not going to title this podcast butt mm-hmm. stuff 2.0. Though. No, we shouldn't. <laughs> I we know shouldn't. you were thinking it though. We'll get flagged. Thinking. We'll immediately get flagged. Uh-huh. Yeah, Stop for running. sure. Dude, you I'm can't so tired. during pod. I could not help it. Okay. She needs some coffee, I guess. I can't drink she's, coffee. And now, I, if you're listening to this, she just pulled a pube out of her mouth right now. No, it's a fucking <laughs> Renesmee fur. Because you know how she's always like rubbing up on my fucking podcast shit when we podcast? Mm-hmm. She's not in here right now, thank God. But. Yeah, her fucking fur gets stuck to my microphone, and then it gets stuck to my chapstick, and then. Word, word, word. So sh- should we let everybody know the plans on the um the the cards against, or should we keep that to ourselves? We should. We should wait a little bit. People do be people do be uh trying to take our our style though. Yeah, huh? people fucking bite our shit all the time. We a bunch of r- unoriginal motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. And, and then if we mm-hmm. say it, then we're going to have people who are like, when's this? When's this? You know, we'll just just put it on them. Yeah, we'll just put it on them. Word, word, we'll word. Well, them. let's see what's coming up here. We got we got some potential uh cool vlogs coming up pretty soon. Um <clears throat> me myself I'm going to be uh going to uh the Muay Thai fights next weekend in is it next weekend? Yeah, not this weekend, but next weekend uh-huh. in Miami. So, I'll be getting some uh cool things for you all to uh tune into, so make sure you stay tuned for that because uh I will be vlogging on the streets of Miami everybody. So I'm hoping to join you. We'll see. She's hoping to join. I'm, yeah, hoping, so. I'm hoping to join. Um, also, it's ten days till we have officially been a year on Ooh. this podcast, and I am thinking about creating something to put out there, just like a little highlight. Of our yeah. year of podcasting. I think that would be fun. Um, I think that would be fun too. Yeah. I think like some great moments and laughs we can definitely put out there. Um, and then, and then, and then, and and just, you know, keep a look out for new merch, guys. New merch, tie dye merch. Tie dye merch. merch. Yep. Get your yep, sticker yep, yep, too yep. so you could stick it somewhere cool. Yeah. Just Show us your, your side friend chronicles <laughs> in the wild. Send us your pictures of you wearing the the merch, so we'll post it. We have you guys on our Instagram page. It's a fun time. Fun time. Well, thank you, Stella the Bella. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to episode seventy two. Hey. We out.